Hi families, my name is Megan and I'm so excited to have church with you right now. I have a question for you. What do you worry about? Yeah, maybe you worry about what you'll eat for lunch or maybe you have something that hurts that it just won't heal. We all worry about so many different things. Thanks for sharing your answers. Well, today we're gonna to talk about trusting Jesus because he will always provide for us so we don't have to worry. I want you to say this with me. Every day, I can trust Jesus. Say it with me on three. One, two, three. Every day, I can trust Jesus. Great. Now I want you to stand up and get ready because we are going to worship. Nine twenty three, Jesus says that whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, pick up their crosses daily, and to follow me. 
Jesus calls us to follow Him with our whole hearts, our whole lives. And being a follower of Christ isn't always easy, but worship is a great opportunity where we can ask God for His help in this. So that whether we feel like worshiping or not, He gives us the strength to do that. And we can push aside all the struggles that we might be facing with our friends or with our family, and we can be in the presence of God. So let's do that now as we worship Him together. So for today's comment section question, uh, if, if you're not with someone, then go ahead and grab them real quick. This is Church at Home. This is a watch YouTube videos alone. So here's a comment section question. What is your favorite way to serve others? So for, for me, like, man, I really wish I could play the piano because I would be playing that piano up for people, uh, but I can't. So I make videos for my church. I don't know, maybe, maybe you're really good at like encouraging people on social media or you're greeting people at the door all the time. You, you know, people are really excited when, when they, come home to you because you're so excited to see them. Um, maybe you help your family cook or you teach people the sport that you love. What, what do you do? What's your favorite way to serve others? Well, I think
think this room might need to be swept. I'll do that later. So as you keep thinking about it, let's watch Ricky and Jamie serve people in one of my favorite ways to serve. Butter sanitize up. Why, what's happening? We are working with kids today. Hang on for a Three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And every once in a while, we like to take a break from doing challenges and contribute some time to helping others. We heard that a daycare needs help wrangling some kids, and we're so good at that. So kids, generosity is when you are sharing. It's important to be generous even when nobody's looking yes. or paying attention. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to it. While we go see how we can contribute, you guys, check this out. What's that? What's that? You say you're bored? Do you want me to entertain you? You know I'm not just some puppet that you can make sing and dance all the time. I'm the internet, but you can call me Pebbles. <laughs> I see you day in and day out, over and over and over again. I help you stream and download and distract and level up and binge and consume and consume and consume and consume and consume. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. You have to contribute something every once in a while. Like, like some of these kids who are actually contributing something to the world at large. All right, who do we have here? What's your name? Hi, I am Laura Sage and I am 12 years old. Hey, my name is Kaylee and I am in eighth grade. Why do you serve? Because I get to invest in kids and parents every single week. Why did you start serving? Um, I guess I started serving because I love kids in general and I love like making a smile on their face and I feel like I do that a lot. Why I love serving is because I get to play an important role in having people people become fully devoted followers of Christ. By doing something as simple as giving someone a cup of ice or their favorite donut, I'm expressing the love of Christ through my actions. Some reasons I love serving are because I get to spend time with my friends and there's the community around me that just makes it a great time to be there. What does serving mean to you? I think serving means helping the church out and helping the community out. I'm already naturally drawn to like babysitting and like hanging out with the little kids, but to know that I could do that on Sunday and share Jesus with them, I just mm. thought that was the coolest thing ever. So I was like, I had to get into it and I just jumped right into serving and I've loved it ever since. Come on! It's always really fun. and. I have so many great memories of just friends and people around me. What would you say to someone who's never served before? I would say that they need to start now because it's so much fun, honestly. You should serve because it's so important to do something so small that makes such a big difference. I'm playing an important role in them committing their life to Christ. This place has become my family. It's my community. I feel safe there. I, When I'm serving, I feel like I'm living out God's purpose on my life. I'm filling what he has called me to do. No, I mean... Just that hey guys! No, I'm not going in there. Oh, I'm Jamie. Who are you guys? What's your name? Meow. Meow? Oh, you're a kitty cat. Hi. We're cleaning. That's great. Good idea. I'm here to help. What's, what's your process? Is this, am I doing it right? How do you know when you're done? Um, we just stop when we're done. Oh, okay. So there was a bird not long ago whose favorite word was no, no, no. Can you guys say no? No! Oh, good job. What's your name? I'm Ricky. What's your name? Tina. Is that your name? Yeah. And guess what? My parents didn't even die in. My mom When we get so old, we're going to die. Whenever my dad gets very, very older, he's going to die. What is this substance that's on the table? These are our snacks. Oh. Yeah. Rescue bots. I have not watched Rescue Bots. What do Rescue Bots do? They rescue. And they're bots. <laughs> but of course. Of course. And he's off. That's a broccoli guy. Oh, thank you. OK, so we're looking at rocks. Yeah. Oh, did I just get a kiss? I think he just came over and kissed my cheek. 
Oh, yeah. and now he's hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> I never knew looking at rocks could be so romantic. Well, do you guys know uh, the Happy and You Know It song? Yeah! Okay, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. You guys are very, very good at this. When? When's your birthday? In two weeks? No, in two sweeps. In two sweeps. Two, two sleeps. I got it. Her birthday's in two sleeps. Not two sweeps or two weeks, but two sleeps. Yeah, that's great. My birthday's in like a bunch of sleeps. Right? We like that. will, we will walk you. Yeah, that's exactly. We will, we will walk you. Yeah. Hey guys, I have a friend that's about to come in and he has lots of candy in his pockets. There he is, it's Mr. Ricky, attack him. Uh, oh no, what happened? No, no, no. Okay, I'll hide this. It's so, it's so great. I'm so sorry. You lied to us! You lied to us! Oh, thank you! Oh, it's balance! Okay, hi! You All right, I know a way that we can solve this. Let's play tag. So who's it? I think you are! Okay. Tag, tag, no, tag, no, tag, 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Duck. 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 Goose. Oh, no! So much fun hanging out with you guys today, but we have to go wash our hands. Thank you, Mr. Ricky. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Ricky. You're welcome. Thank you, You're welcome. Thank you for having us. All right, bye, bye. everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks for See having ya. us. So that's how we serve. But let's take a look at an example from the Global Church. Hi, my name is Zeke Vargas, and welcome to my church. I'm in Kingdom City, KL right now, but we have heaps of campuses around the world in Australia, Cambodia, Singapore, Dubai, Botswana, London, Penang, KK, JV, Ipo, and Zambia. All of our campuses around the world are very unique and different, but one thing we all have in common is that we all love our God. One of the ways we express this is through serving. This is our amazing welcome team. They make everyone feel at home. They set up the chairs for our services to happen. This is our coffee team. They keep our teams awake. This is the amazing car park team. This is the team that directs all the cars safely to church. This is the amazing Mandarin translation team that translate the word of God from English into Mandarin for all those people who do not know how to speak English in our church to Mandarin so they understand more. This is our amazing kids ministry for ages 1 to 12 when we take them on a journey on learning more about God. This is where our church worships God. This is our amazing production team. They make everything look good and sound good. This is the live stream room and this is where the magic happens. So we can put the same message online and around the world. This is the new Christians team. This team talks to all the new Christians who's just made a decision for Christ. In our church, we believe in praying for miracles to happen. We have so many great volunteers who help make our services at church happen. And they also have heaps of fun at the same time. How cool is it that we get to use our gifts to serve God? And the best part is that we get to do it together. Wherever you are in the world, my church is your church. So why does it matter to serve? Now, if you had asked me this question when I was 19 years old, what I would have told you is that it matters to serve because if I don't, I was gonna get kicked out of my house. 
no lie, right? So I grew up a part of the church and then my family uh, had some really stuff, uh, really hard stuff happen to where we stopped attending church. We got really disconnected. I started making all sorts of terrible decisions until the point where after I graduated high school, man, I got to a place where I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. I was pretty lost. And my mom, seeing that there was a problem, decided to step in and invite me to move back in with my parents. And after I did that for a while, she realized, okay, there's still a problem. James is just kind of being a bum. <laughs> and so she said, all right, if you're gonna keep living in my house, you're gonna go to church. I said, yes, ma'am. Then she escalated it to the next level where she said, hey, if you're gonna keep living in my house, not only are you gonna go to church, but I need you to serve. And me being 19 years old, I thought to myself, well, church is cheaper than rent, so why not? <laughs> and I started serving in the church. And even though it was for totally selfish reasons, it's crazy how much I learned in the process. You see, I learned what it means to serve. I learned what it means to help where help is needed. And even though it started out totally selfish, man, God changed me in a significant way because I got to experience what it means to make a difference in the lives of other people. And for those of who are followers of Jesus, we are called to serve, to help where help is needed. I love what the Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. He writes that, so then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Let us do good to everyone. When we do that, we are following the example that Jesus set for us. Jesus' life was defined by serving by putting the needs of others first. He showed us what it could and should look like to serve and love people well. That's why it matters to serve. That was so fun. It was. Ah, oh, what was your favorite part? The part where I told the kids that you had candy in your pockets and they went and attacked you. <laughs> yeah, that was fun for you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to wait to contribute your time and talent to your church. Do it whenever you want. Yeah, you can find ways to serve with your church today. My church used to have Hug Your Church Days. I love that, mm -hmm. yeah. Find a way for you to hug your church. Give your church a big old hug. Don't just consume, contribute. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. Like they said, we are called to be spiritual contributors. What does that look like for you in your life? Maybe it's serving right here at the church every single week. For others of you, maybe it's serving in your school with those people who are in need and those friends that need help and you're serving them. For others of you, maybe it's serving in your home by helping out around the house. It is my prayer today that we all leave here knowing that God called each of us to be spiritual contributors and to serve others. Heavenly Father, thank you for this incredible message today. And Lord, I pray all of us leave here knowing that we are called to serve you and to serve your church. And as we talk today about being spiritual contributors, being a part of God's family through the church, you feel like you're maybe not a part of this family. Listen. Nothing could be further from the truth. God is extending his arms, wanting you to be a part of his family. All you have to do is accept the grace he is offering. What is that grace? You see, Jesus, the Son of God, came down to this earth and lived a completely blameless life, perfect in every way. And then he died a death where he took on your sin, all your failures, all your mistakes, and then he rose again three days later. And what did this re resurrection do? It defeated all your sin, all your shame, death, the grave, everything. Why? So you could be a part of his family. And right now, he's extending his arms, waiting for you, waiting for you to say yes to him. Yes to a relationship with Jesus. Yes to stepping into his grace. Yes to stepping away from your sin and stepping towards him. And you know that's why God brought you to the loop today, to begin a relationship with him. And if that's you in here, raise your hand right now. All across our locations, all across the world, just raise your hand right now. I wanna ask who else? was to turn from their sin and turn towards a relationship with him, a relationship with Jesus. Lift your hand boldly right now. Well, no, that is the best decision you will ever make in your life. And as we celebrate them, let's pray out loud. Pray together with them as they make the best decision of their life. Luke, pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Today I ask him, to come into my life, change me, make me new, teach me to love others like you first loved me. It's through Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said, amen. I mean it when I say that is the best decision you will ever make in your life. And please 
don't leave here without telling someone about the decision you just made. Talk to your small group leader before you leave today and know I am so proud of each of you who made that decision today. Don't go yet. We have a Bible verse to learn together. It's from Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good. Now I want you to practice that and repeat after me. Here we go. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good. Awesome. We can trust every day that God's plans for us are good, even when bad things are happening all around us. Well, I had so much fun at church with you today. On the next screen, you'll see some discussion questions. So when they pop up, just pause the video and have a little chat with your family. See you next time.